Hey there and welcome back to the Archer Sew Along. Today is day 13 and we will be assembling and attaching our collars. Now this is not hard, it's just a lot of steps. So take it one thing at a time and we'll get through this with no problem. So let's dive in. The pieces you're going to need for today's lesson are the two collar stands, the collar, the under collar, and your shirt. Now you can see here that I have fused both of my collar stands. You don't need to do this unless you're working with like a very thin fabric, but I wanted to be able to easily show you which collar stand is the inner collar stand and which is the outer collar stand. Then here we have the top collar and the two under collars. And a quick note about the under collars, they're both cut on the bias. We get a lot of questions about why we do this. And the reason we cut them on the bias is so that they can more easily wrap around the neck. The bias helps them lay flat and wrap nicely. To begin, we're going to need to sew the center back seam of the under collar. My pieces are the same on the right and the wrong side, but you're going to want to align the center back with the right sides facing each other. Pin them together. And there are two notches in the center back in case you need them. And we'll head over to the machine and we're just gonna sew along the seam line. Now align your edge and just sew across. I don't back tack on this because I find that it can kind of scrunch in the edge since we're working on the bias. And both edges are being sewn into something anyway, so. Clip your threads. Now that the center back is sewn, we're going to press the seam allowance open. Now grab your top collar and lay it out with the right side facing up. Take your under collar and we're going to pin this in place. So we're going to pin the edge. center and then again I find the center and pin that and then at the two edges you'll notice the under collar is about an eighth of an inch shorter than the top collar and it's supposed to be. This is so that when you sew this together and you flip it, it forces the seam line to the underside. So just take your under collar and stretch it to meet and pin that. And then do the same for the other side. And same thing for the bottom. The upper collar is a little bit longer than the under collar and again that's so that it forces this seam line to roll to the underside. So we're now going to go to the machine and sew along these three edges along the seam line. All right, align your cut edge. I do a back stitch there. And you're just going to sew up and I like to check to make sure I'm getting close. And so you'll see I'm almost at 5 eighths here. So now I have a little trick that I do to help the corners turn better. I cut across on an angle one stitch. Then continue sewing at a half inch. And make sure your seam allowance stays flat. Cut one stitch and then stitch back down to the corner. Okay. 
Now, there are a few different ways to prep your collar for turning, but I'm going to go over what we tell you in the pattern instructions. So, start by clipping your corner. And you're going to want to get close to, but not too close, so that it shreds to the corner. And then, I like to do another clip, just because there's a lot of fabric going into this small point, and this just kind of cleans out the area a little bit. Repeat for the other side. And then we're going to grade, and I like to grade the upper collar. So you're just going to trim that seam allowance in half. and our collar is now ready to be turned. We have our clipped edge, our graded seam, so head over to your ironing board. Now we need to press the upper collar away from the under collar. And you're not gonna be able to get all the way in there, but just do what you can. If you have a point press, you can use that to get all the way to the corner. Just slide your collar on and press. Now we need to flip our collar right side out. And you're going to need some sort of point press to get into the corner. There's a point press on the end of your seam gauge. Sometimes it can be a little pointy for the collar. Um, and if your threads come through, you're out of luck. If you have a bone folder, that's what I like to use. Put it in. And you can get a nice point. And use your fingers to kind of mold the point. And do the other side. Definitely don't use scissors or anything like that. Once your points are pushed out, we're gonna to need to press. So as I mentioned before, you're gonna to wanna to make sure this seam line rolls to the underside of the collar because you don't want this showing uh, when you're wearing the collar. So, go in and press and just double check that it's rolling to the right side. And you're also gonna do the same for the lower edge. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that's rolling towards the back, towards the under collar. And then do the same for this side. So if you flip your collar so the right side's facing up, you shouldn't see any of the seam line. And you can see we don't here. And remember how the under collar was slightly shorter along the cut edge before they were sewn? 
Now since the seam line rolls to the back, you'll notice they're both perfectly flush. So now we're going to just baste across this raw edge to anchor the two layers together for when we attach the collar stands. We don't want this moving around. We have a nice flat collar right now and we want to keep it that way. So put some pins in there. and we'll head over to the machine. Now, as usual, you can baste along the seam line or you can just stitch within the seam allowance, which I'm going to do now. Our next step is going to be top stitching around the collar. If you weren't going to top stitch, um, I would recommend under stitching before you anchor these together, but you don't need to top stitch and under stitch. That's just a lot of stitching. Um, so you can either edge stitch if that's the look you're going for or top stitch um, a quarter inch out from the edge, which is what we're going to do. So now head over to your machine to do that. All right. I've got my quarter inch foot, so we're just going to top stitch along the edge. Take it slow and just double check if you're in the right spot to turn the corner. One more stitch. There we go. And that's it. Now to start, flip your collar over so the underside is facing up. You should see the center back seam line and grab one of your collar stands. It doesn't matter which. You're going to align your notches and pin in your center. Then I like to fold along the center back just to make sure everything's lining up properly. And then pin the front edge when I'm sure everything's aligned. So here you can see the two collars are aligned. And then we're going to head over to the machine and we're just going to baste along this line. Now lay your collar and collar stand out so the top collar is facing up and then we're going to align our other collar stand. All right, I like to start pinning at the two edges, then the notches. in the center. And then at this point, I like to put a pin right where the collar ends. Um, 
That way things don't move around as your machine jumps that point. Then head over to your machine and we're going to stitch along the curved edge. And we're going to use our half inch seam allowance. Alright, now align your piece. And you do want a back tack here. And every few stitches I just kind of reposition to make sure I'm getting a really smooth line. Our collar stands are sewn together and it's time to grade this seam allowance. Now here's where I do things a little differently. Um, instead of uh, notching the curve, I just trim about an eighth of an inch out from the seam line. And the reason I do this is because when you notch, it creates a point um, and when you turn your collar right side out, there's going to be usually a little divot there, um, like a slight angle. And no matter how accurate you are, it's just something that happens. So I don't know if you guys have ever taken a part ready to wear. Um, usually when a garment of mine dies that I've bought, I take it apart just to see how it was put together and um, the techniques they used. If you take apart a ready to wear garment with a collar, it'll just be trimmed close to the seam line. So here's what that looks like. And then once I reach where the collar attaches, I just cut an angle up to the cut edge. Then you repeat that for the other side. And this is going to be top stitched, so you don't need to worry about it coming out or fraying. That's not a problem. Alright, so our collar looks like this now. We need to grade the seam allowances. So on the collar sand that's touching the top collar, we're going to grade that down to an eighth. So just continue where you were cutting along the curve all the way across. and then flip it over to the collar stand that is touching the under collar. And again, this is on the bias and you can see the center back seam line there. And we're gonna cut this one down by about an eighth. We're not gonna grade the actual collar because it's already stitched together. Um, it's just a pain. So just grade the two collar stands. When you get to the notch, make sure you're still only cutting through one layer. All right, and our collar and collar stand now looks like this. This is again the side with the under collar. You can see it's graded. And then the top collar, again. 
So our next step is to press the collar stand away from the collar. All right, now to press this, I start by just doing one side at a time. So I'm starting with the collar stand that's touching the top collar. And we're just gonna press that away from the collar. Get into those curves as much as you can. And then flip your collar over and turn the collar stand to the right side. Now you're gonna press this collar stand out and just do it along the collar to start. We'll get the curves in a second. Now for the curve, you're just gonna work the seam with your fingers so you get a really nice smooth line. And you can see it's not even pressed and it's pretty nice. So once you get that, give it a press. And for this, you want the seam line to fall right on the fold. So not to one side or the other. And then do that for the other side. So here it is before. And then just do a little squish action there. I don't really know what to call that. And give it a press. And now you can see it's nice and curved. So now we have our completed collar and collar stand and we are ready to attach it to our shirts. All right, so grab your shirt. And you're gonna lay it out with the right side facing up as shown. Here we have the sleeves. Now take your collar and collar stand with the top collar facing up, turn it around, and lay it down. So we are going to be pinning the collar stand that is connected to the under collar. So start by matching your notches. then find the center of that point. And one thing to note is we're pinning an almost straight line to a very curved one. So the cut edges again are not going to align, but the seam line will, which you can see as I'm pinning. Now we're gonna move over and pin the front. So one thing to note with the front of the collar is that the point of the collar stand is going to go past the front of the shirt. And you want the point where they meet to be a half inch. So that way, when you sew along the half inch seam allowance, these points meet. So go in there and pin. And then here you can see between the front and the notch, it looks like there's no way these are gonna meet, but the seam lines actually do. So just work on aligning the seam line, not the cut edges. And here you can see they do align, no problem. Now go over and repeat that for the other side. And again, a half inch is where you want these two to cross. Pin that. And then again, we're going to align along the seam line. go. And our collar is now pinned in place. So what we're going to do next is head over to the machine and stitch along our half inch seam line from one end to the other. 
And I have some tricks for that, so you'll want to watch. All right, so we're going to start stitching right here. And one thing that's important is sink your needle right at this seam line. Don't sew through the seam allowance. You want the seam allowance loose in order to get a really good turn on your front collar. Um, so sink your needle, back tack forward, back tack backwards. Don't cross this line. And it can help to kind of you pull the other collar stand forward a bit. Sink my needle right on there. Three forward, three backward, and then so. And make sure you don't have any puckers in the underside. I feel like I have one right now. Just use your fingers to get those out. Yeah, we're okay. That's just the yolk seam. And then again, as you approach this side, you can kind of scoot the collar sand forward. And then you're going to sew to the seam line, but not past it. I just adjust slightly so I hit it. Back tack. And trim your threads. So here you can see we have our seam allowance sewn. <clears throat> we have sewn to the seam line, but not on the seam allowance. So make sure your garment is like this. We have the shirt here and then both layers of the collar stand to the back. You're gonna take this loose collar stand you're going to just bring it around the front of the button band like that. And you can feel in here everything's flat, nothing's in the way. So just pin there. Then we're going to sew just right along the seam line that we already sewed. Again, starting at the seam line, not past it, and sewing to here and back tacking. So raise your foot and sink your needle. Back tack. Sew across. Here you can see 
the two sides of what you're working with. Now, before we trim out any of this, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that everything is laying flat. You haven't caught the button band, the collar, anything like that. So grab the collar and the collar stand and just pull. And it's really lumpy and bulky in there right now because we haven't um, trimmed anything, but you can see we've caught everything. Nothing is twisted. Um, so just fold that. So fold that wrong side out again, and then we're gonna trim right along here. And you don't wanna trim this before you've turned it to check that everything's in the right spot, because once you do this, there's not gonna be enough here for you to do this a second time. So we just trim. I do a little trim there. And then I grade one of the seam allowances of the collar sand, just to get a little bit less bulk. Now, again, pull your collar and your button band. All right, and then we're gonna head over and press this. All right, so you're just gonna, again, work with your fingertips a little bit. Make sure everything is nice and smooth and give it a press. And then repeat that for the other edge. Now just clip every inch or so along the collar to, but not through the seam line. And then we're gonna press the collar stand away from the shirt. And I do this on a ham because we're working with a curve and it's just gonna be easier and press more easily and nicer. And once you've pressed that, lay your shirt out. With the inside facing up. We are now going to fold the raw edge of our collar sand under, press it and pin. We're going to be top stitching around this to anchor it. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your edge just covers the stitching line that way you're sure to catch this from the front. You're pressing around a curve, so it's a little awkward. You can do it on a ham if you want. Um, it's easier if you're doing it sideways, but I can't do that for the video where you guys won't be able to look at it straight on. <laughs> um, so just work with me here. Press under.
here you can see how much easier it is if you're not looking at it straight on. All right, now we're gonna head over to the machine and we're gonna edge stitch around the collar stand to anchor this edge in place and just to finish it off. And we're gonna do that from the right side. All right, so with the under collar facing up, you're going to align the edge. I'm using an edge stitching foot again. And I do like to back tack along the collar stand. Um, you can do whatever you want if you want to just stitch in place, whatever. Um, but because of this, I do start at the upper edge of the center back. That way the collar hides my back tacking. So you're going to just stitch across. carefully around this corner. And you may need to hand wheel just to make sure you're getting that final stitch. And then rotate. Remove your pins before you get to them. Rotate at the edge. And continue stitching. trim my threads so I don't catch them when I come back around. And that's it. We have our finished collar. I like to give it a nice final press because things get kind of bunched up over at the machine. Here's the outside, it's looking good. All right, so that is it for today's lesson, assembling and attaching the collar. You can see it wasn't as hard as people make it out to be. It's a lot of steps, but if you just take things one step at a time, it's completely manageable and you'll get a great result in the end. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our updates. Next up, we will be attaching our cuffs. So I'll see you back here for then. Bye.